to uh, European Dota. The best Dota there is. This is Mouseport versus Kubeans. Currently, Mouseport is sitting at 2-2. Two two. Kubeans, 1-3. Let me refresh the page. But that 1, that 1 of their 1-3, and three, hell of a 1, let me tell you. <laughs> Hell of a one. Was that the hundred minute game? That was a hundred minute game, with your boy Loda on the bristleback coming yeah. up against Megas against I believe it was Penta. Yes, it was. And dear God, it was. Uh, Did everybody really just lost that game? It wasn't as big of a throw as other Mega Creep throws. Like it, it, it was. Uh, it was. I, I have to give credit for Loda for making the game feel like it was n they were never really out. Like even though at some point it was just him and a Rubik against like three cores of the enemy heroes, the enemies just couldn't close it out and he came out against Megas. Now, why Loda consistently enters Mega Creep situations, I couldn't tell you that, but he that's just his style and got to make the game interesting. He's an entertainer. For them kids. And he entertains, but he has not been doing well in the rest of this qualifier, it seems. That was the first game, I believe, of the their regionals. So they came in strong, or well, at least relatively strong, <laughs> and they have not I mean, been doing well since. Maybe because it, it just took all their they energy. They spent all their chakras. Yeah. Trying to come back from the Mega Creeps for the they went SSJ three or something like that. Yeah, okay, I can believe that. Super Saiyan. That's the one. What what's the J stand for? Uh, I don't know. I don't watch the anime. Or yeah. So why is it super SSJ? SSJ? That's let's let's see. Googling SSJ it. Uh, three Super Saiyan three. I think it's because like it's the in the Japanese, is Super Saiyajin. Super Saiyajin. Okay. That's the J. So, yeah. It's, it's, uh... <laughs> you can't expect to go into that form every single time. It takes too much of your energy. So, yep. he has not been doing well. But Mouse Sports has also not been doing very well. As um, you may know by now, this is the X Ad Finum stack. And they have had mixed results. Even in recent times. They were at Galaxy Battles. Didn't do too bad they beat their first two opponents uh their group stage was miserable but after that they beat vici gaming and they beat happy feet on the main stage and then proceeded to lose to i believe tnc and so you know they're uh it, it's definitely understandable that they were regional invites but beyond that it's difficult to see where they stand right now they're two and two in the qualifier Yep. So it's a relatively even match between these two teams, I'd say. They beat Secret. They did beat Secret. And this is one of these random matches that Secret is known to drop, because that is the only match that Secret has dropped. So They far. lost to Planet Dog. Which is number one in the standings right now. Right. So, I mean, yeah, you can make the argument that they're number two. Aside, f well, aside from the fact that they are not they're number not. two, but you know they could be the number two team in terms of. There strength. are a lot of number twos right now, which is again I told you last game. I'm gonna tell you again. EU is more contested than people are giving it credit for. It's not yep. just free for secret now. Singularity after that victory in the previous match that we cast up against um, Penta. Penta ended up coming out on top, and now they are also contending. All three of these teams, Dog, Secret, and Singularity, are currently tied for first on this initial phase of the second day of... You can't just say dog. You gotta say planet dog. Planet dog, I'm sorry. Because there was a team called Team Dog in the yes, past. Yes, and I think this is like an homage because it's... Misery is on Planet yes. Odd and Misery was on Dog. And yes. so now it's Planet Dog. Really? Yes. I, I, I believe that's the case because I remember Misery tweeting. He was like, ah, that's, that's a clever, clever name. What a meme. What a meme. All right, we got a uh, nice stalker profit combination. I don't know exactly how that combos, but I guess once you sprout somebody in, you could fly over. That's true. The or true 1v1 arena. Just the fact that Night Stalker is a hero who loves running around the map and often needs a plus one to be hey, able to get a kill. That's probably more it. That's probably more it. That's what? why you're the uh, analysis here. Damn right. Sometimes you'll see a spear breaker in conjunction. And sometimes, you know, Alliance has been favoring Nature's Prophet. Mouse Sports has been favoring Nature's Prophet. 
the hero is kind of it's difficult to be able to move towards the mid game which is oftentimes not a common trend for heroes that are able to like get farm easily but like for for some reason in nature's probably like your landing phase is pretty solid because treants just make it so difficult for pretty much any support to contest you because mm -hmm. they just deal way too much damage and no support is going to build a stout shield or a poor man's shield the carries are sometimes okay because you do have that uh, damage block mitigation but then in the mid game phase like no matter what item you build, it's so difficult to be able to just push without being bothered by people. It's so difficult to be able to show up to fights without being like too out of position or you know being tanky enough to actually survive fights or even building enough damage to deal damage in fights. So that's for me the trend of Nature's Prophet I've been seeing in competitive is that He'll have a pretty solid first 10 minutes or so, but then after that, he kind of is in a weird place. Okay, we'll see if uh, the Nature Prophet in this game, in terms of his mid-game, whether he feels very item-dependent uh, and also lackluster in terms of damage output and positioning and stuff like that. We're going to see a Bane. Not exactly one of the worst hero against Lycan, I, I guess. Um, although Nightmare in particular isn't too useful, as Wolves will be annoying. Enfeeble, I think, is going to be decent against Lycan too, to be. Yeah, but no Banes seem to ever get Enfeeble. Although this game, I would definitely recommend Bane getting Enfeeble, because Rubik is going to have a grand old time stealing spells, spells from Bane. Fiend's Grip is literally impossible not to steal. Brain Sap is an amazing nuke for a Rubik. And Nightmare can provide a lot of, because it's an instant cast Nightmare. And so if you are good as Rubik, you can like use that invulnerability on Nightmare extremely effectively. Yeah, I think the Spain is actually just picked for the lane stage more so than for the actual team fights, because Bane can walk around kind of like an ogre, a range ogre, just secure your lanes. So maybe they're thinking of picking somewhat of a weaker carry or mid lane that needs a little bit of like strong babysitting. And we'll see if that's indeed the case. That's a pretty strong That's hit. a strong one. Also very good against Lycan, very good against Kunkka as very well. Very good against Slargar. Yep. Good good pick. Uh, I feel like this hero is somewhat under underpicked, at least in the C region that I've been watching closely. There's a lot of Kunkka in there, there's a lot of Batrider there. And I feel like OD is quite the natural counter to Buffalo. Yeah, that's for sure. I haven't really been seeing too much Kunkka recently, and... I don't know, with Cool Bean's lineup, I don't really know. I feel like Slara kind of fulfills the role that Kanka traditionally fills here, here, which is kind of like a semi-roamer that can set up for kills, but kind of needs a, almost always needs a plus one, and I feel like these two heroes kind of overlap too much. Yeah, and his laning presence isn't the strongest. No. So I wonder what he's really ultimately here for. At most, I suppose they might get something that can set up uh, with X combos, but the thing is that OD also provides really good X mitigation because right, right, right. someone gets X'd, you can banish them, banish last pretty much, there's no way to really mess up a banish to protect someone from X. So, yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, obviously OD came after the Kanka, but still, like, picking a Kanka fourth with your draft not really, like, showing anything, like, because they don't even really have that much team fight. Cause sometimes I'd be like, okay, you have Boat Rum. That's going to be a great buff, but Lycan doesn't really want to team fight that much. Slardard is like more of a pickoff oriented hero, so I'm surprised that they go for it. Well, I think adding a little bit of team fight aspects to your draft is not a bad way to go. Shaker, Shaker into an immediate Templar. Okay, Kubeans was well, very they, sure. I guess they wanted that mid lane matchup no matter what happens. Yep. TA versus OD. Pretty TA favored. She doesn't have to worry about. The damage coming out from Astral Imprisonment at all, pretty much, and she's able to farm pretty safely, because OD can still steal Int, I believe, through the Refraction, but it's not going to deal any damage, and OD doesn't really use Orb early on anyway. I think the only match I've seen OD to use the Orb is the, against the Ember, because yeah. the Flame Guard isn't affected too much by uh, Astral. Right. But I, I think the Templar is a very strong pick because it makes the Bane harass, the Brain Sap harass, rather not that efficient. Uh, you have to plow through her refraction charges first. Although Enfeeble would be nice, but yet again, I just never see Banes going for Enfeeble early on. Right. Although I think actually, never mind, Templar 
obviously you get Cyblay at one, so mm -hmm. you can just walk in there and sap her twice or something. Brain sap at one. I mean, TA is going to have plenty of regen. It's not going to be that big of a concern. You think so? I think so. Until Madara snipes that courier. I mean, and hell, even, uh, which he might, but even Kanka, like, he has nothing better to do. Lycan's perfectly fine against a Nature's Prophet. He's got Feral Impulse. He's got dogs, which these days we never see summon wolves at early levels. No. You will see Howl maxed, you will see Feral Impulse al alternating, and then only once those two spells are maxed, or maybe one of them has three points, the other one has four points, then you will start seeing summon wolves be leveled. Because the wolves are just too paper early on. Unless if you're it's like some sort of high magic damage lane, which isn't there's like no real such thing, <laughs> then they're the wolves just die in like two auto attacks even from a support. And Mask of Madness is also not going to have too many downsides for the like in this game, because there's not that much physical damage on the side of mouse sports. So both teams have their pros and cons, but full comp compared to full comp, I kind of prefer mouse sports just because the OD, I think, was a really good pick. Yeah, I, I definitely think mouse sports got the better draft. It's more well-rounded as well. I feel like... Uh, Lotus li lineup right now is perhaps a little bit too heavy leaning into the physical damage output. Yeah, that's for sure. You've got the Corrosive Haze, TA is almost certainly going to build a Desolator, Lycan always built an AC. And All I'm right. also curious to see what Nature's Prophet will be up to this game, because also I don't really see Prophets going for like global ganks that much. Which also you would used to be the trend of offlane profit. It's like you go suck up a few levels, you get a point in sprout, you get a point in teleportation, you get you get some initiation from like if if Earthshaker lands a solid fissure, then I would hope that a nature's profit teleport would come in because that should be a very easy kill against pretty much all of Radiant's targets because they don't have like a pounce or a leap or any other spell to be able to get them out of a fissure block. Dire invades the jungle, Radiant tries to do the same, but a Shaker will be able to get the rune, so Mouseport going to secure three. Yeah, they will have eight. a... Oh, Torrent. Ooh, that Torrent got him good. Skylark's going to eat a crush as well. He's running actually towards he's the Rubik. So the Lift is going to be there as well. He's done. Yeah, he is dead. There he is... doesn't want to have to spend the Lift, but he's going to have to. Wait. Oh. Oh my god, he's going to be fine. Oh. Niqua did not oh, get off the chain stun here. Oh, he eats his way through? What All right. a player. That was 100% Niqua. He wanted to save his stun. Well, he saved it, but also didn't get the first But blood. at what cost? Uh, at the cost of not having a first blood. That's pretty much it. Now, that kind of leaves Lycan alone down here for a little uh, while. Loda. And that's, I'm, I'm surprised that they've gone for this setup. It's really smart by Mouseports to send the Bane down here. Oh, Loda's being blocked right now. Those trees doing a little bit of work here. Loda walks back in, get, getting a little bit papped. He's oh trying to drift through he, the trees. Okay. He, he just had to munch through an entire forest of Wait, tangos. Trees also being cut down. But yeah, like you said, Loda need to pop that salve. He's going to eat the last piece of tango. So he is out of region completely against a Bane. Not only that, but he's going to be out of tree eating mechanisms. Uh -oh. So if Sprout comes out... Yeah, he'll pick up a Quelling Blade eventually. He needs the Stout Shield, though. He needs so many early game items. He went for two Slippers. Those are Agi items. I mean, I mean, he's going to build it into the Poor Man's Shield, but still, like, you are need to get that first bit of gold. You need to be able to get to the side shop, even. That almost one armor you get, though, from two Slippers. I can't argue with that. All right, mid lane, we got the OD versus uh, a Templar Assassin. Templar Assassin... Doing quite okay right now in terms of CS. Actually tripling over Thug. Thug, please. Thug, please. Nine CS, eight denies. Jeez. Oh, Kunk is showing up on this bot lane. Alright, does he have the X? He does now. X Torrent got the mana for it all. Madara. Them creeps, though. Some X-ray vision. Two. All right, they're going to they, Spartans are going to be a tough one. They pop the high, the right click coming in fast. Spartan does have a brain sap. No, no on cooldown. It. They lift them up, and I'm not sure why the prophet's still fighting. Does not hear how. He goes woo, and everyone is uh, <laughs> getting a lot of extra damage. Yeah, this Rubik is so happy. It's not often that you're able to trade hits with the nature's prophet like that. But yeah, with the howl, definitely changes the equation. And they get the kill on Spartan, who had used the brain sap as a nuke. As opposed to, I mean, he, he didn't know that he was getting ganked, obviously, as maybe next time he's kind of juking around, come with me. 
And now we got the Nature's Prophet. Nice body blocks by Come With Me, though. That Prophet TP seems to be a little bit off. Does have another void, but in illusions to tank the okay. tower, but he's not going to die for it. I think it. that Prophet TP should have ensured a kill. Yeah, the thing was that like no matter which direction he goes around Rubik, Rubik is just going to go the other way because Kunkka is, you know, it's two heroes to body block with. But, you know, maybe next time doesn't find anything. But it's just, you know, three minutes in. He's hit level two. First night is going to be more important. Meanwhile, on the top land, we've got Earthshaker solo up against a Slardar. And this is not a core shaker. It's just that no one else is really there right now. Oh, it's an off lane shaker. Getting safe lane for him. Right, right. Probably going to max enchant totem. No, he's maxing, maxing Aftershock. Interesting. They have pretty heavy combo potential on this team. They've got that Nightmare, so you can easily set up. Oh, wow, he's getting kind of low. I mean, normally you see like these kind of 1v1 shakers maxing uh, Enchant Totem. Well, that's why like, I don't think he wants to 1v1. I don't think he wants to. Like, he's just... Well, he's in a 1v1 lane right here, so... Right, but I think that Nature's Prophet should take over this lane, and I don't think he should, like, start building his way into a 1v1. He should build his way into being a roamer. I don't know why Prophet is still bought, because at this point, Lycan has just decided to be like, I don't want to have to deal with this lane. I'm going to go jungle. Support rotation up top. Like, Bane and Nature's Prophet are just chilling in this bot lane. They're not doing anything. X marks the spot. Fissure trying to break things up, but it looks like he should get tra uh, chain stun here. Skylark, yeah, lifted up now, finally. They do get the kill. Nikwa gets it up Mid here this lane. time. Mike getting dove by maybe next time. All nice right. Hunter. Void's going to come through. Mike going to eat a lot of right click here. Loda ports in. I still like it. Okay. Yeah, he, he had to go back to base because he was jungling and he was out of regen. So he's just going to take over this mid lane for a little bit. But pretty solid rotation coming out during that first night. Getting TA was probably the highest priority kill because Lycan was not really farming that well. It was definitely the TA who was topping the charts and pretty solid engagement. Now hopefully Thug will be able to get away. But it looks like he may have overstayed his welcome on this mid lane as he gets X'd. Going to get brought. Astral? Oh, Astral? Yeah, I'm he's not sure. He's dead. He's yeah. still dead. <laughs> hey. Wait. Yeah, he's still dead. But it was four heroes. And again, like, I don't know why, what Spartan is really doing down here. At, at the at most, I think he should be kind of putting some aggressive wards. Because it, it's pretty clear that Lycan is not going to lane anymore. So wow. he should be kind of putting some aggressive wards in the jungle. Set up so, stuff for Night Stalker. Set up stuff for Nature's Prophet. Because Lycan is not the safest jungler. Like we said, he does not get points early on in Wolves. So... He tanks a lot of damage when he's farming inside of the jungle. Yeah, Lycan is like so under farm right now. Yeah, which I don't blame him. Like it was a it was a good landing arrangement initially by uh, Mouse Sports, but again, I think they're lingering too much. And now come with me, gonna X X Torrent. No How's gonna fly through as well? Spartan will bring Saf a little bit of HP back. Meanwhile. You do have Mara going straight on the Rubik. Not going to get the kill Spartan now. In a lot of trouble. There's a Sprout on Loda. Loda just cuts out of it with the Crawling Blade. Now Madara yes. traps himself Spartan's in. Spartan's TPing. Finds the tree. Finds the path through the trees. Madara will go down. Yeah, that's not the trade you wanted. <laughs> you would have preferred the Bane to die. Yep. Maybe next time. Comes in with the double damage though. Has boots. Picks up a blade of an attack. But I'm able to really convert that DD into a kill, I don't think. He's has Hunter. He would like to know where Kanka is. That's his best option. Has a little bit more time left on this DD, and Kanka just is he's barely out of vision. He, okay, so he sees a siege creep gets denied, but he doesn't know like where Rubik is, he doesn't know really where Kanka is, and he's not able to do anything with this double damage rune. Alright, Sprout here from Madara? Oh wait, they're going in now. Bot yeah, they lane. are. Loda. There's a Sprout, but he cuts out of it. X marks a spot. X Torn, in fact, here on maybe. And now maybe. Look it's at the damage, time. man. The howl. howl. Yes, there is a nightmare into a brain sap. Come with me. Punch him. All right, there you go. There's the punch. Loda now they're away from his team punch. as well. <laughs> Second Sprout. Loda walks through. Not going to get blocked out. That looked like it. They got blocked out. Loda now goes back in, but we'll just die to the right clicks. Yeah, unfortunately, Rubik was completely out of mana, and a Rubik with no mana is utterly useless to help against that kind of rotation. And well done by Mouse Sports, able to pick up a kill. And Slardar goes down on the top lane in the meanwhile. Okay, Echo, Echo slammed. slammed. 
Yo, don't sleep on Max Aftershock. Okay. That's how you 1v1. I mean, Enchant Totem, I think, harasses way more up to that point, but does also require mana, so. Yeah, that's true. Though they're continuing to stick around in this bot lane. Tower getting kind of low. But, yeah, I, I mean, this is, I guess this is just the game plan. They want Spartan to stay down with this Nature's Prophet just to make sure that Bane doesn't die, which hasn't been working out too well, and Nature's Prophet doesn't die, which also has not been working out too well, but they're getting kills at least. Yeah, I think they have been heavily underestimating house damage output. Yeah, They've been sure. just, like, taking those right clicks. And now they don't have Kanka down here on the Radiant, and that's been the secret to their success for getting these kills, as well as Howl. And maybe next time his... It's not nighttime. He's not six, but he's still pretty intimidating as a Night Stalker. Come with me now in the top lane. Trying to sap to that level six. I'm really surprised that they've been able to get away with keeping this Earth Shaker in this lane for this long. Because, oh wow, Shaker went treads also. Yeah. Wow. I mean, this is uh, the pretty frequent common 1v1 build. Well, so, but then, like, the question is. Why not send the Prophet here? That, I mean, that, that's at least my question. Why not send the Prophet in this in this top lane? Because he can teleport. You see an opening on Lycan. It's not like Prophet is initiating on Lycan. He lets one of his teammates initiate. I think the Prophet, like you said, mentioned with, with the trees, is fairly strong at kind of commanding some attention from the supports. Also good at pressuring Lycan. Like, despite the fact that Lycan did get a couple of kills, he's now demoted to jungling. Right. And I think... A lot of that has to do with Prophet being strong in lane. Mid lane, Thug getting pretty low. Can he banish himself? He's gonna dodge the boat as well. Has Sandy's Eclipse, but yeah, he's not worth it. Yeah, Thug has been playing a little bit more aggressively than he needs to. But I guess that's uh, he's assuming that there's gonna be a continued focus on the bot lane. But basically, every time that Loda goes to the jungle, his supports go to the mid lane. And every time Loda returns to the lane, his supports go to the bot lane. Oh, Loda wants to go in on Spartan on this bot lane. I mean, does he have summon wolf? Easy nightmare TP? Yeah. Or just TP? Or okay. Just TP. Loda's completely like <laughs> juked out by these creeps <laughs> in the trees. I'm not sure what that was about. <laughs> I don't. I think he was trying to attack move or something, but. He kept going to the creeps. Maybe next time. Uh, it's not going for anything like a Midas on this Night Stalker. I'm always curious to see what the first item is for Night Stalkers. Sometimes it's like an urn, sometimes it's the Midas, sometimes you just start building straight into that Aghanim Scepter. But this game, maybe he doesn't need the urn since he has an OD with the Asensora. Nikwa, mid lane. That is fun. I think the urn is still pretty nice. Yeah, urn is always value just for like the active. Especially because they don't really have any heals on this team. Only Bane can heal himself. I like this wraparound quite a bit. They're pressuring the tower up top. So somebody's gonna defend and ideally. They have such good vision on yep. this left side of the map. Well, they will know that people are closing in, and now Smoke breaks up here on the back line here. There's Grip on one, Silence on the other, nothing they could do about that. Looks like uh, Rubik's <laughs> first one to go down. The Wrath of Nature joining as well. x Torn Boat being flown out here on... Well, actually nice missing nightmare. completely. Nice here comes, uh, well, the Echo Slam, the Enchant Totem follow through. He has Sandy's Eclipse if he wants to use it. Uh, I don't think they need it. Well-timed Enchant. Yep. You were saying the nice nightmare. What nightmare does is put the target in one second of invulnerability in the beginning, and that was able to allow them to dodge everything. Yeah, Spartan's been doing work on this bin. Hmm. This Kanka has been getting his combos disrupted pretty frequently, and now top tower was claimed, mid tower to follow, and all of a sudden every single tier one is disappearing quickly. But it looks like Cool Beans wants to contest. Yeah, they are gonna look for a fight, Skylark. It's okay right now, lift it up, toss back to the tower. Nice silence here coming out here, preventing from any more access from happening. Loda running in from the top side. They do have Amp on Skylark, turns around with nice the Fissure. Fissure. Missing, but he jukes to the left side. Defensive Astro gonna come out now. Thug under a little bit of fire here from uh, Loda. 
Okay, what a Fisher, Fisher coming storm. out. Yeah, that's a big one here. Skylark will go down to the tree on the right side now. Maybe next time, surrounded, isolated by all four. Just runs away straight up. Madara's not going to get focused. Where is the defense of Astro? There is none here. He eats the full bolt as well. Huge Sanity's Eclipse coming from the duck. Another Fissure coming out. Madara's going to go down as oh. well. Wait. Yeah, he is going to be dead. Where are those Astros? Need to save allies here. Now Spartan's being left for dead here. Odie's he's farming creeps right now. Okay, well, I'm not sure about that. Mickey? I mean, he's pretty low. Barely they out have, of the they range. They have Mickey trapped there, basically. Thug sees him. These treant micros. Yeah. And now OD, oh my god, he might die to these neutrals. He still might die to neutrals. Nah, he's fine. Yeah, he's fine. The wolves needed to crit like a couple of times. And they kill off the Kanka as well. The rotation's now coming the other way around. After such a long fight, it's still going on. If Rubik is totally screwed over here. Yep. And he flies over Woo! the fissure. Did not oh. oh. That was close. That was close. I wonder if it's better if you just flew left. Just like away from the camp. No, no, no. It was the it was the Night Snarker that flew. The well, the Rubik also flew, right? No, uh, Rubik was just caught. He had Fissure stolen. Oh, okay. He I thought he was still uh, flying. No, nah, but he went for the deny. It didn't work out. So an extended invasion from Cool Beans initially looked very solid for them, but they stayed way too long and I guess was not expecting OD to re-enter the fight because like you, I was like, I don't know where this OD is, but he was pretty low. He was waiting for his moment up on the high ground and he found it. Well, it looks like we're going to see an Orchid build coming out from Madara. You are saying no. Perhaps his mid-game impact isn't the highest here. Enchantum stolen here from Insania. Skylark just... Oh, wow. He just walks out? How? I don't know. Wasn't he being hit? Did he backpack blink? Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. What a player. What a god. Yeah, so in that mid-tier 1 fight, he was super close to his blink dagger, which he that was, I imagine, one of the initial reasons for the defensive astral, but he didn't get it. But I guess he's managed to farm up in the meantime and with plays like that I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do with this blink tiger. Damn man what a For those of you who are confused basically what you can do is when you put an item in your backpack it doesn't like get affected by normal item rules and so once that six second backpack cooldown times out your three second blink damage penalty is unaffected and so if you time it extremely well it's not easy to do but if you time it extremely well then you can blink out out of any damage, pretty much. Yep. Normally you see some, some more tanky heroes that have time to actually wait for that six right. second backpack timer. Yeah. But Skylark, I guess maybe did that swapping a little bit earlier, so. Yeah. Breaks a smoke here on Come With Me, just blinks away. That was pretty smart. He moved forward to break any more smokes because he knew that Kunkka was broken, but. Well, x will will find him, and this time there is no blinking out as yeah. he's surrounded by everybody. There, I'm surprised he actually, like, I, I, so I thought it was smart because he saw Kanka. Kanka's smoke popped, so he moved forward to see if he could pop anyone else's smoke and then immediately blinked out. But I guess he was assuming that his team was ready to follow up because there was no one there, no matter how many sm smokes he popped. Mid lane, defensive astral. Well, oh, what a nightmare. Oh, nightmare again going to work, but they still Holy just damage. take down the OD. There's a grip, but gets canceled immediately. In fact, grip stolen now. From the Rubik, they have the X back. Dude, does he have many mana? No mana for the grip, but looks like Malisport just getting completely decimated one by one. Hmm. And this grip steal is going to be very valuable. As a level 6 Rubik, it's not going to last that long, but as long as it nets you one kill, that's all you really care about. Now, there's a lot of stuff to cancel it for sure, but still, it's uh, in a, in a pickoff situation, it will be deadly. And Tia is getting very close to her Desolator, actually. Mike hasn't really been... Uh, we haven't really seen too much Mike. He showed up in that mid-tier 1 lo super long fight. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, he's just been farming. And he has been farming. He's top net worth, out-farming the Nature's Prophet, out-farming the OD by a country mile, nearly 2k net worth ahead of this Outworld Devourer. And OD has the Midas, so... Yeah. It's more impressive that he's out-farming him. And I mean, standard Templar Assassin item build... Uh, well, Helps you take more objectives. So sometimes if you 
are going to be just mindlessly farming. It's sometimes in your best interest to go for the Deso before the Blink Dagger. Sure. But Mike actually opted to go for the Blink Dagger first, and it doesn't seem to have slowed down his farming speed that much, because this is still a fantastic pace. Yeah, he's getting... Or he did get a couple of decent kills, so... Would make sense there. Meanwhile, his teammate, Loda, has somewhat caught back up, has completed that Mask of Madness working on the armlet. He, too, has not been showing up to pretty much any fights. He's been stuck in the jungle, pushing out lanes, stuff like that, and he's recovered in levels, and he's slowly recovering in farm. Well, we got a, ourselves somewhat of a slow game. I think that favors Malsport, I want to say. Yeah, I mean, you've got an OD Midas, but it mainly will come down to how many initiations they can get with Nightstalker, I think. Mm -hmm. Because the later the game goes, either Nightstalker becomes more and more useful if he has substantial amounts of map control. You've got the Aghanim Scepter, you've got a gem, stuff like that. Or he becomes pretty useless because you're just stuck in your base as a Nightstalker, and that hero is not happy if he's not running around spreading his wings whenever it's every other four minutes. He's also very good at leading Smoke Gang, so he, even if he's pinned into the base, Smoke Gang during night is quite right. powerful because you run into an enemy lineup, they don't see you, you see them, that kind of situation. Yeah. Like a smoke such as this, which they have darkness up. It's still a minute and a half, still natural night, but they may be able to find something as Madara is going to start pressuring this bot tier 2, and they're going to hope for a rotation because there's already a very, very deep ward placed by the Dire team next to this bot tier 2 tower. Mouse but no one is reacting. <laughs> yep. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, they are making some sort of defense. Observer Ward's gonna scout pretty much everybody coming in. Yeah, but they're gonna leave it. There were too many heroes. They thought if it was just two, then they could probably take the fight. But if all five heroes come down, there's no way you're winning a five on five engagement right now. I think Mousepore is also thinking the same thing. They're like, okay, well, they're grouping up too much. Let's just back it up and keep on farming. Madara does have the orc get finished. So some, some key items are coming along here for Mousepore. Uh, so uh, who does he silence? Who does he care about silencing? Rubik, Slaughter, Kunka, the back line, I suppose. I guess... Not bad against the life, uh, not life, the lichen. If before he transforms, right? But I, I don't know. I, I don't really think it's the best item option. And he has his next item queued up is a sheep stick. So he's very interested in keeping some hero or multiple heroes under control. But I feel like he may need to build damage this game. Cause Od is a great core and all, but like. You, he's a single target core, and so he's going to be able to bully like the Lycan, but Lycan's pretty, you know, he's, he's going to be pretty slippery for an OD to get control of, unless if he goes for something like a Pike on this OD, which does have the four staff completed, almost certainly going to be going for the Pike afterwards, but still, like, I feel the OD, uh, the Nature's Prophet, needs to help this OD in team fights dealing damage, not so much just crowd controlling. Mershan getting low, like you mentioned. It's taking quite a bit of time here, and it's gonna be another trade. Yeah, and I don't know what Mouseport's. Uh, hopefully, they do something aggressive with this Aegis, and it's not just a farming Aegis, because these two towers, that's a pretty hefty setback. I mean, I guess you're taking it away from this Slard RTA, which is another good thing, because they, they can very easily get a Roche, but you still need to do something aggressive with this Aegis, and it looks like they are. Oh my god, <laughs> that enchant remnant. Madara closing out here. Come with me, throws out the bow. A Sirenara one. It's nothing. And nope, doesn't even put the rum on anyone. But wait, look at the base though. They win the fight with Loda. With that rat Dota. Doing Loda things. Okay, blink. Wait, on the back line, they found one. Sorry, maybe, uh, maybe next time getting found, rather. Yeah, the wolf sprints way out and... Sardar gets away as well, so... I mean, it's not the worst right now, looking no, pretty good here for Lotus team. Yeah, that, that initial tier 2 on the bot lane really snowballed very quickly, getting the bot tier 3 down to nearly a quarter HP. 
Hastrin gets picked up here by Mickey. He's walking towards the pit and he's like, oh wait, they just took it. I think it's super important here for Mouseport to keep their lanes relatively pushed. I mean, they have a profit, so that shouldn't be oh, true. Wow, Mickey mid lane. going in. Yep, that is two hits, half of his HP. But, but now, now too, a little bit too deep here. Yep, there you go. Yeah, just barely enough damage to break through that refraction before her blink dagger came off cooldown, and now they want more. Goodbye, Rubik again. No vision of come with me. Oh, oh they do. Yes, they do. The flying vision coming out here from uh, Mal Sports. And he's gonna pop to the orchid, but they'll yep. finish the job anyway. And now three heroes go down in very quick succession, and that will convert easily into another tier two tower push. Yeah, man, TA thought she had a free kill on uh, Night Stalker, which Night Stalker, as it is, that's a pretty... You, you have to feel pretty confident in yourself to go on a Night Stalker like that, because like, if he flies above some trees quickly, like you have no slows or stuns. Yeah. Or, I mean, he didn't have a trap planted in advance, so it's not an easy kill. Thug was in the right place at the right time, used an offensive astral, Nature's Prophet had teleport off cooldown, showed up, and since... TA used that blink aggressively. She wasn't able to blink out after her refraction was up and goes down quickly and the rest of her team just wanted to save her, but too late. And Rubik keeps showing up into these fights and just gets a massive totem to the face every time. I think that really speaks to the problem that you mentioned in the draft is where they... There's someone all over the place uh, when it comes to team fight. In yeah. fact, they don't really have team fight. No. It's uh, just the Kanka. Yeah, it's just the bow. Maybe Nico are getting a couple of good crushes, but so far it's far, f few and far in between, and they're definitely losing out. This, I think, this is the stage of the game where Skylark should be able to take over as well. Yeah, he can definitely make life very unpleasant for a Lycan specifically because Nature's Prophet is at the stage where he can very easily follow up on some sort of Blink Echo initiation, and when you've got Chainstone against a Lycan, it's deadly and looks like they want to do something on this bot lane but don't really have very many aggressive wards on the radiant jungle thug walking away yeah thug's been pretty quiet as well yeah and this is kind of what i was hoping they would avoid like it has been a farming ages granted they did get those three kills and like they weren't asking for it but it just happened and so one could say that like maybe that's the kind of fight that they were hoping to get with or without the Aegis is now top lane. Adora getting caught out, X Torrent brings them back but the Astro again is there, Thug does get hit by the bow, now come back out, oh, Echo Slam's gonna be big and now it is everyone getting absolutely murdered. Hammer gets dropped, Stolen Fissure doing a little bit of work here but now maybe next time this flies over he's gonna cancel this for sure. Yep. Insania totemed Okay, Skylark gets more, but now top lane, Madara already pushing Lola. <laughs> it's just like, don't mind me. Well, there is going to be Orchid and Sprout, but the man just cuts himself out. Tier 2 is going to go down, and I think this is where they can actually poke at the high ground a little bit. They absolutely can. Thug still has this Aegis for about, well, actually not that much more time. He only has about one more 40 seconds or so. But still, you've got four heroes. TA really does not want to have to buy back in this situation. She's not going to. You're going to have to give up this tier three, possibly even give up one melee Rax. Perhaps more. Mm, they're respawning. TA is still dead for eight seconds. Wolfman coming in here. X marks his spot, finds himself. Any Astro? There is the Astro. Rubik has Fissure stall. Oh, though. the grip, the grip. Now the Fissure canceled. cancels it immediately. Now Skylark in a little bit of trouble and Chan Totem keeping himself alive. Finally, he does go down. On the back line, Mickey finds himself a support kill as well. So, not too bad. Base defended. Yeah, the Treants were doing work on the range tracks in the meantime. Excuse me, not def base not defended. Base uh, avenged. Sure. Not the best avenging, but, I mean, you killed two supports. You didn't at least have to buy back the TA, but... I don't know if, I mean, maybe because having a rack down against Nature's Prophet is so incredibly irritating. Yes. It's so demoralizing. At I'm least he's not going for the Axe build. Yes, that's true, but that's because the Axe build is garbage. <laughs> well, it's pretty good if you're up a Rax because it just keeps that's true. being super pushed in, but it, instead he's got Hex, which I think is way better. Yeah, but second item Hex is like... It, uh, uh, he is an int hero, so it gives you a lot of damage. It's just something I don't see very often. I'm a, I'm a big fan of early Hex in general, though. It's just 
sometimes if your team is not coordinated, especially as a nature's prophet, sometimes you're off doing your own thing, then you don't really have the initiating power that a sheep stick provides. But you know, now that Night Stalker is starting to get up and running, he actually went for a Solar Crest, not going for the Aghanim Scepter, but instead going for a Halberd next. So I don't know. I, I feel like Nature's Prophet might have some trouble making use of this hex for the next few minutes, but it's still a great item. It's uh, counter to Lycan, I think, in my opinion. Less pre shape so shift. Yeah, pre shape shift. Less so about the the hex, more so about the Heaven's Halberd that's coming out oh, from yeah, the Night Stalker. Oh yeah, that's for sure. You just make uh, Lycan's life pretty miserable. Farming boat. <laughs> All right. I mean, they're scared. All three cool bean heroes in the top lane are hiding in these trees, hoping to find something. But Mouseports doesn't care. They see a free tier two tower on the bot lane, and they see a tier three tower in the bot lane with their name on it. But instead, they're gonna back off. I guess they may be suspecting a smoke. They don't really know where the radiant team is right now. They are farming. They're farming. Double damage gets picked up here by Miki. And on the move perhaps to farm a little bit more. That seems to be the case. Man, they are stalling so long on this top tier two. They are waiting for someone to defend it, but no one cares about defending it. And even these three heroes aren't like great at killing people either. It's a Slardar, a Kunkka, and a Rubik. You need like really solid initiation for these three heroes to kill off like a OD or well I guess I guess the OD is the hardest hero to kill. They can probably kill any other hero. Skylark has a Lotus Orb completed. Pretty interesting. Uh, I guess suppose for the Corrosive Haze. Yeah, that's the, really the only thing I can think a of. A lift, maybe? Or maybe just to like discourage X marks the spot, but really like Kunkka doesn't care too much if he gets X'd. Oh, bot lane. Is Skylark. this a solo kill? No, you need the Nature's Prophet. But Nature's he's Prophet. Here? Yeah, he's coming. He's coming. He's got Hex. Yeah, buddy. Got him. That was solid. Wait. Oh, oh, the armlet. The howl. He's dead still. Oh, wow. Mates out the sanity, though. Mm, I'm not sure about. <laughs> That's okay. Thug using that. That's a long cooldown. It's a long cooldown, but I don't think Mass Force are going to do anything until the next Roche. Roche is going to be back in like a minute and a half. They are in no rush. They've already taken one Rex. The pressure is mounting, and TA has to be on side push duties, pretty much. Well, they're not going to the Roshan just yet. Maybe just uh, This go. is just pressure. All yeah. five of their heroes aren't there. They just want to make sure that TA has to show up to the spot lane, because she's really the only thing that can take care of all these trance. Kanka does not really have damage to make Tidebringer useful, so TA is the only person with AoE damage. Or, I guess, Nikwa, but... <laughs> Prophet poking away at this top shrine. Shiva's guard to finish on the OD. Not gonna lie, as this game progresses on, it was one of the earliest racks, uh, kind of like just randomly ticked like this by Mouse Sport, but I just don't see them winning. You don't see Mouse Sports winning? Sorry, I don't see uh, Lotus team winning. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, well, Lotus is pretty big, but. Yeah, he is. And. It's just mostly him. Uh, TA is big too, I guess. But all these heroes are very well, like, so TA has this BKB, but Lo does not have a BKB. Right. And so, like, if Skylark Earthshaker sees this TA BKB, then he's like, whatever, I'm just going to hunt the Lycan now. Oh, man, they're going to hunt him, all right. Wait, they don't have any detection. They oh, do. Oh. Rip. How did they saw me? How did they saw me? Vision is a uh, hell of a drug. Yeah, but how about invisible vision? Was that just game sense? Maybe. Kunkka gonna follow up though. Yep. He's dead. Yeah, this is looking grim. Well, that's gonna be second lane of Rex. Yeah, I, I, I had, I've been guilty of calling games against Loda too early <laughs> in the past, <laughs> but this time I think it's, it's not looking optimistic. It's now Mike right. activates his BKB. He's backing out. And now it's gonna be Skylark getting completely focused. Lotus Orb nice, as well as Astro, and that is a ground target of Sprout. My man, Madara. Madara. He's right. going to be able to blink out. Astral stolen. Okay, defensive Astral. Got him. That sets up for Skylark, though. Is it? Oh, never mind. Where is he? Blink, Echo oh! Slam. There it is. Welcome to the jam. He gets lifted. Whoa, the defensive, uh, well, defensive the Lotus everything. The Astral. I don't even know what kind of Astral it was, but 
Skylark is still going to survive. He's, He's so fine. tanking on this yep. Shaker. With Lodo's back, Kanka's back. And I guess they're satisfied for that for right now. In my opinion, they should just go for Roche. This is... They, they shouldn't do this. Yeah, they're going for a little bit more. They have so many defense. Hex is going to come through. Blink and Chan Totem on Niqua. They're going to focus on him. Look at the deeps here. Niqua drops super low. Okay. It's Bolt. daytime. You need to back out. Not going to hit. And now Thug. Yeah, he doesn't know about back. No, Drops a hammer fine. again. You're focusing on. Come with me. He walks away. Rubik, gonna get sprouted. How we'll is no one on radiant? Yeah, how died is yet? Yeah, nope. oh, Loda, Loda might be dead yeah, here. He's, he's, got, he's, he's got toggles. No, no he does toggles. Not have toggles. Rubik's gonna go down as well. One by one, they crumble, and they are just having trouble killing people, doing enough damage. Now the tier three or the tier three goes away. The Rax is fully exposed. The top is pressuring very heavily. Nikwa is going to get straight up grip here. That is a glimmer grip with the fissure blocking away the Rubik. Yeah, that's good. And indeed, that will be game. GG. They killed off that TA, and that TA kill, I guess, was enough of a signal that they were like, she's the only thing we need to be concerned about. Yep. If Loda's back, it's not really that big of a deal because Loda does not have a BKB. There's I no way to mitigate any of this like crowd control and damage from the OD. I think there's some heavy issue with this draft. It's very single dimensional in terms of damage. It's all physical damage, so it's very easy to itemize Shiva's. Uh, well, Heaven's Halberd would have came out. There is Solar Crest. Very easy to basically survive, and then they also didn't have team fight. Yeah, it I, was. I I think. The draft was fine aside from the Kunkka pick. The Kunkka pick really made no sense to me. I think you could have perhaps think about a, a different mid as well. Um, a Lena esque mid, like a magic mid. I think TA is okay because TA can be like Mike built this blink dagger first, so you think that TA is going to be like a space creation mid, which Lena does also fulfill that role as well. Right. But like Slardar and TA is a great duo ganking combination. It's just that Lodo is so far behind that Mikael was just like, I can't go for kills. I need to farm to compensate for how underfarmed you are. So, I... I yeah, the Kunkka also did not help right. with Lodo being underfarmed. No. There, there's also there. They were able to get a few kills in the bot lane, but any hero could have gotten those kills. Kunkka didn't do anything Kunkka. I'm sure he acts a couple of people, but... Well, yes. All right, guys. This is uh, another one in the books. Cool Beans will now drop down to... One and four, so they are pretty much done. Not mathematically done, but meanwhile, Mouseport improves to three and two. Mouseport can be a team that goes far. Definitely shows some good stuff, especially from Skylark. But uh, that's gonna do it for this one. What is coming up next for us? So next up, you? we've got Danish Bears versus Open Qualifier number two, which is Planet Dog. Planet Dog is Dude, currently that's a good game. Yeah, that's a good game. Pla uh, Danish Bears is currently second place with three and one, and Planet Dog is currently tied for first place with a score of four and one. I don't know why they give you the good games, but oh yeah, you there's know. gonna be a good one here. Yeah, it's not like a uh, Team Secret versus Singularity is coming up on the other stream, but you know. <laughs> All right, we'll take a break, guys.